Hey everyone, this is Tom from Vermi Bag. Today I'm going to show you how to make this. This is a really neat, handy sifter that will fit right onto a mortar tray. Uh, it has little railings that will keep it on there. It's simple to build. I'm going to give you all the instructions, step-by-step -step instructions. I'll give you the dimensions that you have to cut the lumber at in order to make it. And it's designed to fit on the Lowe's mortar trays. Uh, the brand is o Oddjob, O-D-J-O-B. Uh, they're 21 and a quarter inches wide, so if you have a mortar tray that's 21 and a quarter, this will fit on it. If not, you could adjust the length that, I, that I'm giving you to make it fit that. So it's basically the same. But it slides right on the, you put your castings in here, and then it's almost effortless. It just glides on the top of this uh, mortar tray. Super durable, super easy to build. So if you're interested, keep watching. Okay, folks, first thing you're going to need is your Lowe's mortar tray, uh, well, or whatever mortar tray you want. The one I'm building right now is designed around this mortar tray, and it's the only one I know it'll fit on. This I got from Home Depot. It's called ODJOB, so Odd Job. Uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, of the one I happen to buy. Now, if you measure the width of this all the way from the outside to the outside on each side, it's 20 and a quarter. So 20 and a quarter inches is what this is based on. I don't really care about the length this way, just how wide it is, because I'm going to have rails, those rails are going to slide on the sides of this thing. So 20 and a quarter. So if your mortar tray happens to be wider or narrower than that, you're going to have to adjust the length dimensions of all the items I give you by that amount. So if it's 21 and a quarter wide, you're going to have to add one inch to all the lengths on, on the dimensions. Let's grab the pieces and I'll show you. I got to pre-cut all the pieces that I'm going to need. Okay, so these are all the pieces you're going to need to put it together. You're going to need the side pieces. These are the pieces that actually hold the material. So the ones I have here are actually four inches finished. So you may need probably a one by six in order to get this four inches. You don't want to make these too uh, narrow, otherwise you're not going to be able to hold very much material. Now you have two sides on this thing. The long side is a 17 and a half inches. And then you have the shorter side, uh, two of those which are 14 inches. This is going to make the box that holds the material. And to put those together, you're going to need a couple of these really small screws like we use for putting the stand together. We're going to drill a small hole on the end of each one of these, just on one side, half, half the thickness of uh, whatever this is. So right about here on each one of these. And then I'll form the small square that's going to hold the compost. Now the frame you need for to hold the screen, and the screen is actually 19 and a half inches by 15 and a half inches. So uh, that happens to work out really nicely for the width of that uh, mortar tray. So, and this is an eighth inch uh, screen on this thing, or diamond mesh. And this is aluminum. Make sure you either use aluminum or stainless steel or something, or zinc coated. But it, it, aluminum, I think, is best because it's not going to rust. Uh, this thing's going to get wet and stuff. You rinse it off and stuff. And if you use one that's metal, it's going to rust and it's, all these uh, openings will close together. Now, this is the frame that actually will go together like this, roughly. And this is going to sit on it. That'll be the first thing we put together. So this is going to be the base, the picture frame, per se, for the uh, screen. So these pieces, now these are about three-quarter of an inch, roughly, by one and a half inches. So you're going to have to find some type of material that's wide and narrow. Uh, this, you know, again, I'm in... Italy, so everything I have over here is in millimeters and metric system. So just something. It doesn't really matter as long as it's fairly narrow and uh, at least an inch and a half wide or so. So you're going to need two pieces that are cut to uh, 22 and a half inches. So 22 and a half inches for that. And then the other two pieces that will go with that are at 13 inches. So your picture frame. 22 and a half inches and 13 inches. 
the box for the compost, 17 and a half inches by 14 inches. And again, this is probably a one by six, uh, yeah, one by six material, more than likely will work the best. And then the last two items you're going to need are the railings. And these are the rails that are going to actually slide along the outside of the mortar tray that keeps this thing from sliding or coming off of the mortar tray. Now, I happen to just something again, this is a one by one and a half. So I want something that's thick enough so when I stick it up on its end, it's not going to be top heavy. You know, so I'm going to screw through here and there's plenty of surface area here for me to screw this into this base. If you made it too narrow and tried to get a long narrow and you tried to screw it on this way, it'd be really hard to put a screw in this way because it wants to tip over. So some type of almost square stock. And these are... I didn't, they are... 16 and a half inches. So two pieces, 16 and a half inches for the railings, and then the pieces here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the the frame together, and then screw the mesh or the uh, wire screen onto it first. Okay. So once you put your picture frame together, you're going to need some lips on the end that overextend because that's where this railing is going to attach. So what you want to do then is stick your railing piece on the ends of these. They're even with the end. And then put a mark on the inside. Do the same thing on the other side. Even with the ends. And then put a mark. So now we can take our screen and the screen just needs to stay to the inside of those marks. It doesn't matter if it goes up to the marks or not. So on this side, I'm going to be, I'm short of it, about an eighth of an inch. And I just need to make sure there's at least that much room for these railings to go on to mount onto this. So. Okay, so I align this inner piece, the smaller 13 inch piece, with each of these marks on both sides. So I have the same width all the way around it here. Then I'm just going to place this screen on it. And I'm just going to center it over this area. It doesn't have to be exact. It's not going to come over all the way to the line. It's just going to be cover this board on both sides. And then about equal distance, you know, on each side. Then I'm going to take some small screws now and put some small screws, wood screws into this to hold this thing into place. And it's going to be a little floppy because this piece isn't attached to this one by any means. It'll stiffen up when we put up uh, the box on it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and screw these in. And I'm going to do it just about in the middle of this distance here. Uh, I pick screws that have a, a head that's big enough that it, it won't go through the, the eighth inch uh, screen. Now, I don't need a lot of these on here either. I'm just going to put, put probably just one on here. Okay, now that we have the screen on this, like I said, it's going to be, it's not terribly stiff. It's not going to be real flimsy, but don't, don't go throwing it around or it might come loose. You can see the, that the, this isn't exactly perfect all the way around. The important thing is that the screen doesn't go beyond this edge. So, it doesn't go beyond this edge here. I'm going to set it aside and go ahead and grab your box pieces. And we're going to do the same thing that we did on making the stand. I'm going to drill a hole on the end of each, a pilot hole on the end of these, half the thickness of this, so from the distance. So half that thickness, you have to put these pilot holes in or this thing will split on you. And now I'm putting a hole in the end on one end of these. Don't go drilling holes on both ends. By putting a hole on each, on one end, there's no way of putting this on or putting it together all wrong. Okay, now I'm going to put one of these really small, thin screws in there. And these are about 
you know, they're, they're more than the thickness of that by at least uh, probably three-eighths of an inch. So just put them in to the end. Get them started. Okay. Okay, now let's go ahead and put this box together. Uh, the easiest way for you to do it really is to lay it out if you can visually see. You know you need a screw in each end, so make a nice perfect square. Oops, okay, helps if I have the right side. Okay, so that's how it goes. That's the only way it's going to go together to make a square, and we have a screw in each end. So now let's go ahead and tilt them up and put this. And if you do this on a flat surface, this thing will come out nice and even. So go ahead and screw this in, even up the edges. You have your box together. This is actually going to be again the box. This is the amount of volume that you're of compost that you're going to be able to throw in here when you're sifting. Okay, now that you have your box together, go ahead and grab your screen. You have the frame on, and go ahead and put the screen side down on top of this box. Now, what you want to align is on the inside here. You want to make sure these edges are as close to the to the edges of the frame as possible, They're even all the way around. So even it up on that corner and then look at all the other corners. And it might be slightly off, but that's fine. Just kind of split the difference for, it just looks pretty centered on there. So that's about right on there. Now I'm going to go ahead still and drill, at least for a couple of them, I'll put them in the middles here. I'm going to drill a small pilot hole again because I don't want to risk splitting this. So I'm going to go down into this lower piece, so be careful. It's only right here. This other section, there's no board underneath it, so you got to kind of look and see where the board is underneath there. So I'm going to put a pilot hole right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put one, one screw in. I'm putting those in pretty tight for their flush. Okay, that one's done. Make sure nothing moved over on this other end. Then I'm going to put a pilot hole over here. And the screws I'm using here, again, you can see the thickness here. I probably have about that much that's biting into this lower piece. Don't go with really big screws, but also don't go with really small ones. thicker screw bit here. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing, put a couple more here, and then I'm going to add some additional ones, so I'll speed it up. Another thing I need to point out is when I'm drilling these pilot holes, uh, when I'm doing the ones for the side pieces for that little thin one, I'm using a tiny little uh, drill. Don't use too big a one, otherwise it won't grab anything. And then when I use the one for the, the bigger screws, you can see it's quite a bit bigger. So it has to be quite a bit smaller than the thread size. So now we're going to go ahead and put on the, the railings. The railings, I'm putting mine for the thicker side is up. So I have a little bit deeper thing for it won't jump off of the, the railing very easily. I want to go on each side. So then I'm going to drill a pilot hole on the end of each one of these. And then I'll put in a, a screw that's slightly longer than the, the board and will go into the bottom board pretty good but won't go through the bottom. So you got to get the right size wood screw here that will go completely through there but not come out the other side otherwise it will be poking you. So let me drill it out. You even these up with the end. 
make it nice and flush right on the end on both sides. Like that, and then go ahead and drill your... I'm going to put two holes, two pile holes in each of these. Oops, it moves slightly on me. I'm going to hold it down a little bit better here. Now you want to keep both sides even when you're drilling these holes. If you don't keep this side even too, you're going to have this thing at an angle. So you could clamp it on there, or there's a bunch of things you could do, but just be real careful. Once you get the first screw in, you go, whoops, that's not the right one. These are the, make sure you use the right length. I almost used the short one. And again, even it up, push down on it. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to put one on there, go this side, even it up, and drill a pilot hole. Okay, I'll come back and do the other ones in a moment. Now, this is critical. Before you put this last rod on, this railing, you want to measure the opening here, so I can find a tape measure here, or right here beside me. You want to measure how far it is between this rail and this rail on the inside. And I know we, mo we measured this mortar tray a couple times, but it is 21 and a quarter. So I want a little bit more than 21 and a quarter. So if I go even with the end, I'm right there. I'm going to probably pull it out just a little bit. So I'm at about 20, almost 20 and a half. Right there is 20 and a half. Give me a little bit of space, free space, and 20 and a half. Uh, even the ends up on both sides. I'm overhanging a smidge in there. Uh, I can tell I actually moved this one. I have this board off slightly. It could have pointing that way just a little bit, but it's no big deal. Uh, so now I'm going to draw a pilot hole in the center of this thing. On this end here, halfway. measurements again, make sure I have them the same. I'm at 20 and actually 3 eighths, so I'm going to make this one the same, 20 and 3 eighths. tray and see if it works. Okay, here's my mortar tray. Let's try it. So you can see here that there's actually these railings are what are going to keep this thing on the mortar tray and keep them from coming out. So it's like a little sled. It's going to go on there like that. So we set it on there. And it fits perfect. Then I can go like this. Nice and smooth, super easy to do. I got a big surface area uh, for, you know, the compost can spread out in there. So, and you could make a couple of these, one with a larger screen and then one with a smaller screen if you wanted to. I'm perfectly happy with the eighth inch. Uh, I think that does about the best job of all, overall. So, that's it folks. Uh, I think this is a really simple way with the directions and the dimensions that I have in there to make. It couldn't have cost me, the screen was the most expensive part. Uh, I think it was like three or four, four dollars? I think it was four dollars, four euro. And uh, the wood was another three dollars or something like that. It wasn't very much, maybe four dollars. Less than ten bucks you can make this thing. It's really durable. And then you can use one of these mortar trays to set your castings into. Because not everybody I'll still use these little trays that I have because I have the little plastic things that fit inside there. But not everybody can get these. I mean, I just, they happen to have more I'm at. 
But a mortar tray, Lowe's, I know everybody there in the States can get one of these. And you can make this nifty little sifter for less than 10 bucks. It's real simple to make. So that's it from Vermi Bag. I hope you find this uh, video useful and you guys would use it. I'd appreciate if you'd give me a thumbs up uh, or leave a comment. Uh, it kind of helps draw more people to Vermi Bag site. Uh, that's it. Everybody take care. This is Tom. Ciao.